we've been able to establish thank you we've been able to establish the fact that God the Father is a builder God the Son is a builder the apostles were builders and we as believers are builders but you need to understand as we build up upon the teaching tonight the part three on the series you need to understand that your building starts with your hearing on wednesday i was emphasizing the fact that you should not be like those who look themselves in the mirror at that point i was going to offend the sisters when i began to say if a sister doesn't have a bible in her bag she would have a mirror and some people say no 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 pastor you were wrong so um i will draw back my statement our sisters are very spiritual they don't carry mirror they carry bible up and down so tonight i want to talk to you still on the subject that building starts with hearing so when you look at the book of matthew in chapter 7 matthew in chapter 7 from verse 24 the bible there says therefore whatsoever or whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them i would liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and everyone which heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it so building starts with hearing in fact i kind kind of love the way the luke version rendered the same story so let's look at it from luke luke in chapter 6 luke in chapter 6 i want us to read from verse 47 up until 49 please pay attention to how luke rendered it he said 47 say whosoever comes to me and hears my saying and doeth them i'll show you to whom he is like he is like a man which built a an house and digged deep he says this man digged deep listen to me when you are a mere hearer you are not a deep thinker you are not a deep person you have not learned how to dig deep he says he who hears my word and doeth my word he is like that man that digged deep he's like a man which built a house and digged deep he laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently look at the word vehemently they were tenacious it was a continuous onslaught he said he could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock i told you that when you talk about building you must think about your substructure which is your foundation and there's no other foundation which anyone can lay except jesus which has been laid so jesus must be the foundation upon which you're building so listen to me tonight every person on earth is a builder that's why the bible says in psalm 127 except the lord builds the house they that build build but in vain 
Now, how do they build in vain? They are like the person that built his house on the ground that had no foundation. When the rains came, when the flood came, when the wind came, they pulled it down. So they built but in vain. So everybody is building. And as it does seem in the church today, we have more of hearers than doers. And that's why a lot of church folks too are building in vain. They are not building for eternity. They are not building what is enduring. Because they are people who hear but do not do. So you see, the Bible calls such a person the foolish builder. But you see, the wise builder dug deep, located the rock, and then placed his building upon the rock such that it can stand the vehement onslaught of the rain, the vehement onslaught of the wind, the vehement onslaught of the storm. Or if you would, the flood. Don't be a mere hearer deceiving yourself. You see why Paul says, according to us grace, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10, has been given me as a wise master builder. He added the word wise because there is a foolish one that built his upon the sand. He says, I am a wise master builder. He used the word sophos architecton. That's where the English found the word architecture. He says, I'm sophos architecton. I am a wise master builder. And God wants every believer who hears the word of the Lord to be a wise master builder. Not to be a foolish one. Who just go about building, but building upon nothing. That's why Romans in chapter 2, let's also look at it. In Romans chapter 2, verse number 13, the Bible clearly also says that, For it is not hearers of the law that are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Stop celebrating how many conferences you've attended. Stop celebrating how many teachings you have listened to. In fact, you are not pleasing to God because you teach the truth. You are not even pleasing to God because you prayed the truth. You are pleasing to God because you live out. You practice the truth. Every opportunity you have to practice the truth is an opportunity to showcase who really you are. I know we celebrate people because they can quote 50 scriptures in two minutes. But you see, heaven is not moved by that. Heaven is not moved by how, how powerful I can preach. Heaven is impressed by how powerful I can live out the word which I preach. It is called practice what you preach. That in itself makes you a wise must build that. The foundation of enduring structures is in practicing what the scriptures teaches. Are you with me, church? Now, so if we've been able to establish that, for your structures to be enduring, you need to know the purpose of the building. Why am I building? Why of all things is the believer called to build? Can't God build for himself? So the, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. The reason why many people misappropriate life misappropriate relationship is because they don't understand that the child God give you is a building. It's a building that is in process. Your spouse is a building. Your marriage is a building. Your career is a building. Your service to God is a building. God wants you to have an understanding 
of the purpose of that building. That child, it's a building that is commenced from the day you were given. You have the blocks. You are asked to build it up. Your marriage, bricks were given you. You were asked to build it up. So when God, when God looks at you as a married person for 20 years, and your marriage is at its foundation. Yet you celebrate 20th year anniversary. And heaven says you are still at the foundation. And in fact, your foundation is not on the rock. It's on sand. And you raised a child. That child is 30 years old. Yet it's at the foundation. And what is the foundation? On the sand. Not just on, on any other sand. A quick sand. The sand doesn't even need rain. A blow of false doctrine can bring, that, can bring down that building. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will not be found wanting. So in 1 Peter, I want us to turn our Bibles to 1 Peter. We begin to read from chapter 2. And then we will look at verse 5. First Peter in chapter 2. And then we will be emphasizing verse 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, clearly, the Bible teaches here that we are lively stones. If what I have in my Bible is the same thing you have in your Bible, it says you also as lively stones. What is a lively stone? Stones naturally are dead, right? Inanimate. Lively stones are stones that are alive. And God says the believers are lively stones. In fact, prior to this, he describes Jesus in verse 4. He said to whom also... Coming as unto a living stone. And he says you too are stones that are alive. And that you are being built up a spiritual house. So the first purpose of this supernatural infrastructure that God wants you to build. Is because you as a person you are a spiritual house. You're a, you're a house that is being built by God. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are his tabernacle. He lives inside of you. He's resident inside of you. So you are a spiritual house. Because you are a spiritual house, you need to carry the consciousness of a builder. You are a house that is being built by God and you are the one God is using to build that house. Your life is a house. Your marriage is a house. Your career is a house. Your service to God is a house. Your children are houses that God wants you to build. And God wants you to build them to purpose. So you see, that you are a spiritual house. He says and you are a holy priesthood. You are a holy priesthood. A priest. Is basically. A bridge builder. He's a bridge between. God. And man. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. From verse 17, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. But look at it from verse, from verse six, uh, 17 now. I just quoted, I just quoted 17. Look at it now from verse 18, Second Corinthians in chapter 5 and then from verse 18.
and all things are of God, who has reconciled, please pay attention to the word reconciliation. He has reconciled us back to himself. Look at the next thing. By Jesus. He has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We now have a ministry conferred upon us. Every one of us as a child of God. Jesus reconciled us to the Father. The Father has given us the privilege to reconcile the world back to himself. That's why this prayer mindset of wipe them all out. Kill them. Die by fire. Die by thunder. Die by lightning. Is not the mind of the Father. The Father say you are a reconciliator. I have reconciled you. It's your responsibility to pull down this wrong structure. I reconcile these people back to me. Jesus showed up in the temple and he said, pull down this one and in three days I will erect the right one. That's the consciousness which you carry. You meet a prostitute. You are not sent to judge her. You are sent to reconstruct her. Pull down this wrong building and rebuild another one. You are a reconciliator. He says you are a kingdom of priests. You are a holy priesthood. Priests are not those who are all out to judge men. The purpose of this building is to reconcile men back to God. Read on, Pastor Jimmy. You, 19. 2 Corinthians 5. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. But he's committed unto us the word. Not just the ministry of reconciliation. We should school ourselves to exhibit the words of reconciliation. Because we are priests. Look at media. Give me Hebrews in chapter 5. Um. From verse 1, let's read up on to verse 5. Of course, the choice of words in Hebrews chapter 5 is the word a high priest. But just put within your mind the business of the priesthood. Hebrews in chapter 5 from verse 1 up until verse 5. Pastor Jumi, you have it? For every high priest taken from among, listen to me, in other words, you could also say for every priest is taken from amongst men. Uh-huh. Is ordained for men. It's like saying a pastor. It's not a spirit. It's not an angel. A pastor is a human being. He's taken from men and he is ordained for men. In the same vein, you as believers, you have become royal priesthood. You are taken from amongst men. You are ordained for men. Read on. You are ordained for men in things pertaining to God. That you may offer. So we are coming to another responsibility of the priesthood. Is to offer both gifts. And sacrifice for sins. You are reconciling men. You are offering gift and sacrifice. And listen to me. Your first gift is not your financial offering. Your first gift is your life. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God to present yourselves present yourselves not your money present yourselves not your tithe first of all yourself yourself before your tithe yourself before your money yourself before your dance i know you are a good dancer you could as well go and be dancing for for michael jackson's son since he's dead don't 
come to church and scatter church, raising chairs and raising the roof. Give yourself first, not your ability to sing. You know, I say this because, you see, when we do praise programs, people carry chairs and say, Rave the roof, see, Baba, okay, oh. Rave the roof, see, Baba, lo. Come on now. Oh, all okay, yeah, yeah. So, one pastor got angry. He said, if you, he said, in his church, people used to fall and break camera. If you, say, this camera is one millionaire. If you break it, you will pay. From today, it's break and pay. I say, I like you. People who have not offered themselves, they wait for the world to unleash a dance steps and then they take it and come to church. They want to trouble us. Don't trouble us. Offer yourself first. You are a priest. The purpose of this building is to offer yourself as a gift to God. Beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. That you present yourself to God as a living sacrifice, living, not dead, holy and acceptable. He said, This is your reasonable service. So you see, this enduring infrastructure we're building will involve we offering ourselves to God. We are lively stones. We should offer ourselves back to God as a spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So, there are three essences of our priesthood. Number one, we are going to be ministering to the world. We are going to be ministering to the world, to sinners. We are sent to reconcile them. Number two, we are going to be ministering to the saints. We are sent to inspire the saints, to edify the saints, to encourage the saints. You are not Judge Desmond, Judge Jumi. So, if not, God will have stopped naming us pastors. You know, you know, in the days of Samson, they were not called pastors or deacons or elders. They were called judges. Samson was the judge. So if God wanted the ministry of a judge to continue, these days he would say he gave gifts unto men. To some he called to be judges. So judge this month. Just judge people, chisel them, cut them down. So as a man, you keep judging your wife until nothing is ever good about her anymore. As a woman, you have judged your husband such that if they put him on auction sales, nobody will buy him. Because you, you've judged him with your caustic tongue. Because you never knew you have the worst of reconciliation in you. You never knew you are called to. Why should someone want to commit suicide? Because he's in a relationship with you. You are so you got what I was trying to say, right? You are so problematic that when the person meets you, his life... So we were trying to resolve a couple. And after two hours plus, so I, I, I told him, I said, man, you need to learn to take responsibility. Everything in the home rises and falls on the man. That woman you met some 10 years ago, Go back and tell her what I saw about you. I'm still seeing it. You know, did all kinds of powerful, inspirational talk. So we say, over to you talk. He said, you see, everybody knows I don't have a problem with leadership. My friends out there. And where I was back here, I said, oh my God, not again. You think you are a good leader. Your home shows you are a bad one. And we pastors just don't know how better to tell you you are a bad leader. And he stopped defending himself again. And the wife actually said it. That that's the problem. She's afraid of being vulnerable with him. Because he will always take it against her. And these are Christians. What's the purpose of this building? It is because to start with we are living stones. Secondly, we are a royal priesthood. And within this royal priesthood, we are to minister to the world. We are to minister to the saints. We are to minister to God. And except you are holy, your ministry to God is not acceptable. Except you are holy, your ministry to the saint doesn't count. Except you are holy, your ministry to the world is a charade. Or charade. Or it's just falsehood on display. You will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. 
what is the pattern of this building now the pattern of this building because when you look at the book of exodus in chapter 25 verse 40 god clearly told moses see to it see to it that what you are building should be according to the pattern that is shown you on the holy mount don't build according to any creativity don't build according to what you were taught in harvard build according to the pattern that is shown you upon the holy mount okay i'm going to offend pastor jumi now but since i already have it down so she was following a particular family trainer listening to his teaching and this person is very good he's so good that he's so versatile that he has now is now studying chinese children japanese children canadian children to come and teach you how to raise your children he does she doesn't know in my mind i'm saying that is what happens when you when this no longer counts to you anymore you will begin to study how Oboni people raise their children and they are very prosperous and you begin to teach us because you have lost touch with this are you listening to me oh come on someone look at me look at me you have lost touch with it the bible will no longer matter on how to raise for you you need extra curriculum so you will get extra curriculum how does indians raise their children and they are prosperous i'm not sent to study how indians raise their children because those indians are not christians to start with and so if the bible that is the ground norm for my life can no longer inspire me on how to raise my children i had better quit and go and become shinto become hindu become japanese all i'm trying to say is not to attack the curriculum is to say the main curriculum that is given you is this the bible see as i was telling you guys last time as a student in my 100 levels and 200 level i did elective courses and one of the elective courses i did was legal methods was law course but you see if i like let me score 110 over 100 in legal method it will not make me a lawyer abi sis will me who is taking an elective course because i score 1 billion over 100 will you make me a lawyer no you are not a lawyer so the main thing is the course you are studying pay your attention to it you see these children if we receive power for our news to go down before god and pray, you don't need to study chinese children to make these children prosperous the thing is that laziness to keep our news praying we will rather shout them to correct them shout on them and then the next thing we look for chinese curriculum how are chinese raising their children and then modern men will like it you know why it is very dangerous when you lose your vision and you double your efforts you lost focus of where you are really going but you have so much energy so you double your effort in chasing everything that does not exist and pentecostal and we pentecostal pastors we are the one that confuses the most because the pastor have lost touch that he's meant to teach people christ he says he's meant to raise prosperous uh, millionaires and then he brings this unbeliever to come and teach you how to raise make money he brings this other Igbo smoker to the altar he brings that comedian that is a gay to the same altar and then tomorrow he's wondering why fire is not on his altar are you not the one that put up the fire by allowing nonsense in your church you think paul will do that in his church or you think jesus will do that in his church listen to me let me tell you if we want to build what we endure for your information i found out 60 percent of the people you celebrate especially in the prophetic order in churches these days are fake 60 percent of them the challenge is that most of you don't use your data so well. You mise your data. So information that are online for you to know. And then half of us also, we pastors have raised people to defend us, not to defend Christ. So people will rather die defending their pastor 
than defending Christ. Because people don't know whether their pastor's doctrine is biblical. All what they know is, I love my pastor. Come on, someone say, I love my pastor. And the comedians will say, I love my pastor. Even when you don't love Jesus. <laughs> if I'm offending you, I'm sorry. But I just plan to tell you the truth the way it is. So I asked someone. Suddenly, your pastor has taken this charlatan as his spiritual son. And then your pastor, suddenly he says, I don't want to look for trouble tonight. Suddenly, the song he sang with her, he says, Waymaker is not right. The revelation is not high. It's not high enough. They need a higher revelation. That we are the waymakers. Okay. The simple thing is that it's just like someone told you that because you are a very, very benevolent person, huh? you are the blessed man. So your father who you inherited the wealth from is no longer the blessed man. You are the blessed man. Does it make sense to you? That the sister should go and change her song. Jesus is not the way maker. He has made us way makers. And the other charlatan went to his church to, to go to declare that. Oh, you see what the way I'm feeling is that uh, as if I can tear some of you head and put Bible there and ensure that you leave out this Bible. See, the essence of coming to church is not to get a miracle. You can get a miracle in your house if you pray to God. Did you hear me? But there is something you can't get at home if you don't come to church. That is fellowship of the saints. You can't get it alone. One of the main reasons why we come to church is we need to share fellowship together. And cooperatively, we need to worship God. So, don't attend a church because you think you can get a miracle there. If you are a genuine Christian, you can get a miracle in your house. What manner of father will not bless you if you are living right? He becomes a wicked father. So, we have no reason running around looking for magicians. Yes. One in South Africa. So I'm becoming nice now. So I'll be calling their names. Before I used to. But you notice I'm getting nice and I'm not calling their names. They brought someone who was alive. They went to package him. They used coffin to bring the guy that he was dead. And then he lay hands on the guy and prayed for the guy. The guy came alive. And his church, everybody was celebrating, shouting. But people in the guy's workplace said a few days ago, this guy still came to work. Where did he die? They researched all the mugs. Nowhere they got discharge certificate from him. So where did he die? <laughs> Later on, when he found out that his drama has been caught, he apologized that it was those that brought it to him. They didn't tell him he was not dead. And he's a big time talker. He pulls crowd. I just don't want to call his name. The swan is in the entrance of worry. Very popular. Everybody celebrate him. I followed the story of a lady impregnated. What breaks my heart was that she died at delivery of that child. You know what he did? He adopted the, he adopted the child as a genuine, nice man of God who adopted an innocent child. And they said he's now not new. There are many children he has adopted. That rumor says he actually impregnates and because we belong to a dangerous generation, people keep quiet once they, they get money. So there are many ladies who are keeping quiet. How can you sit under me and I'm sleeping with you and you are not my wife? And I'm preaching, you are saying, hooray. Do you need to be told that you are lost? Say, oh, come on, preach, Papa. Preach, Papa. Yes. One of them came out shamelessly the other time. He's one of the guys who celebrate in Nigeria. To say, my wife was the one that first cheated. I forgive her. When me and now cheated my own, she didn't forgive me. What? What? Oh, come on. I don't have to call his name. He's popular. Ask those who are around you. They will tell you his name. And you know what is heartbreaking? He divorced his wife and married a South African. And he still prophesied. His church is still filled up. 
Why are we saying this? It's not to judge men. It's to tell you how reprobate your generation and mine has become. So what is the pattern? He says, so why I went, I, I veered off into all that is because there is a pattern and a lot of us don't know there is a pattern to this building. Let me show you a couple of scripture. It does seem like media are uh, struggling to be with me tonight. So I don't want to depend on them. First Kings chapter 6 verse 7. First Kings in chapter 6. I want to show you a very powerful scripture. He says, and the house... Please pay attention seriously. And the house, when it was in building, was built out of stones, made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. It says the stones that were used to build the temple. At the quarry site, they were already chiseled, cut to size. Such that when you bring them to the final destination, no hammer was heard, no chisel was heard. They were only just fitted in. That's the pattern for ministry. That's the pattern for the life God has called us to. It's not a noisy life. And that's the issue. When you see a pastor who is flashy, it's one out of two things. It's either he's not called or he's very, very immature. The call upon us as believers permit us to be very blessed. I mean extremely blessed. But it doesn't permit us to be extravagant. It doesn't permit us to be showy. So I, I, I'm just only trusting God to help me. I presently have a pattern. So when I pick my suit, I like to pick normal colors, plain. When they bring me those ones that I have, I say, ah! It draws too much attention to me. I said, the teaching is not about me. I don't want something that puts attention to me. Let it be about what I'm teaching. And when you... All kinds of... So I say, I can't wear that. I say, don't worry, when I grow up, for now, I can't wear that. Don't draw attention to yourself. You are too small to get the attention. Think about the donkey that carried Jesus. Imagine the attention leaving, the don leaving Jesus and the attention is on the donkey. The donkey will die before its time. It's not about you. Without Jesus, you are a nobody. Are you hearing me? Let it dawn on you. Even your senior pastor, without Jesus, he is a nobody. The only honor you place on men is the honor God placed on them. So I'm preaching to you now. Once I just come close to where you are, you get up and kneel down. I will slap you to get up. Why are you kneeling down? Say because you are papa, you are senior pastor. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. live the life forget about those kneeling down you see that was what the man of God Pastor Sunday Adelaja he said when you come to Africa you see people who attend to you he said they are very good in using bless you sir bless you sir bless you sir and serving nonsense bless you sir they pour hot water on you when they want to make tea for you and say bless you sir bless you sir he says stop blessing me serve me right keep the bless you sir just do it right. He said in the western world they don't have the bless you sir. But they have excellent service. So while I was praying with a, uh, someone today so I mentioned Daniel, a scripture I quote for you guys here regularly. Daniel chapter 5 verse 11. And she was like wow, wow. Oh I need to add Daniel back to the books I'll study. I said, if you are studying Daniel, it's not enough to study Daniel. You need to pray Daniel. And I said, if you must pray Daniel, no matter any other thing you pray, it is not sufficient if you don't pray Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 and Daniel chapter 5, 11 and 12. 
everything you see Daniel, Daniel manifest. Captured in Daniel chapter 6, the Bible said he had an excellent spirit and he was preferred above every other person. In Daniel chapter 5, verse chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, the Bible says he had light, he had understanding, he had knowledge, he could dissolve doubt. I said, go pray those things into your life. Don't just study Daniel. And don't just pray it, practice it. So there is pattern. The pattern is not for us to be cowards and cower before fellow men. It's not to become men pleasers. It's to become God pleasers. Someone say hallelujah. So what are the patterns we find from the scripture? The patterns for building an enduring house. It's not by worshipping your pastors. You should honor your leaders. Honor your leaders. Be respectful. But don't be a man worshipper. Your work is carnal. It's fleshy when you're a man worshiper. The reason, you see, let me tell you this. Listen to me. All of you come out of the Bible and listen to me for a moment. The Bible says in the last days, there will be lying wonders. There will be false teachers. And he says, we will heap unto ourselves preachers who will tell us what we want to hear. Question, who are the false teachers? If everybody who is popular is genuine, who are the false teachers? And many of you, you've been deceived to think that false teachers are white garments. So once someone is white garment, you believe he's false teacher. Once someone is Pentecostal, he can prance around. I told you one of them. For those who followed yesterday, I told you the story. The lady says, you, if you choose to believe, fine. If you do not believe your business, but I'm telling you through life experience. He's very popular in South Africa. Another person from the other charlatan. This one is another charlatan. Shepherd is what started his name. She said, I joined the church because my mom attends the church. And one pastor in the church got close to me. Atan takes me home. Before you know what, he even dines with me at times. He got to know facts about me. Suddenly, after like two months, one day in normal service, you know, big church. Suddenly, this pastor was prophesying about me. Called my name. Called the clothes I'm wearing to church that day. Called the address of my house. Called the money in my account. Though he didn't get that one exactly right, he said, but very close. Called the color of my bed sheet. I said, ah, this is God. She was so excited she's in the right church. Finally, what are the next day? This other younger pastor that I said related to that came to her house. She said she's already romantically getting attracted to him. She decided to check his phone in case he already has another lady. Only in his WhatsApp, she saw one unregistered number. It's international. When she checked, lo and behold, he has sent every detail of her life. She stupidly gave him. He sent it to the pastor. That was what the pastor used to prophesy. And we are teaching this. There are people from here who we get off tomorrow. Where are they going? They are going to... Uh, okay, Pastor Jimmy, or the... From verse 1. So we are looking at the patterns for an enduring edifice for God. Okay, don't worry. We have it on display. He said, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about by a great cloud of witnesses. So he said, don't forget that there are people looking at us. As we are living our Christian life, don't forget that there are saints who are looking at us. The false teachers we have amongst us, they are looking at them. The false brethren we have too, they are looking at you. They will bring offering basket to you. You know you don't have an offering. You will do your hand like this. And do like this. So, in your mind, you are deceiving the usher. You don't know that you are fooling yourself. I don't have. I give myself away, believing that God will soon prosper me. But because there is more faithfulness than faithfulness, you need to do a charade. So you just. So we are compassed by a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. That's the first pattern to building an enduring house. Lay aside weight and sin. What did I say? Lay aside weight. Teach it to your neighbor. Say lay aside weight. Lay aside weight. Don't be a deceiver. 
lay aside weight. Listen, weight are the unnecessary that slow down the necessary. When last did you see a footballer put on Dan Shiki? He said, I'm a traditional man from Osobo. Osobo. So I want to display my culture. So he plays for Chelsea, but he wears Dan Shiki. By the grace of God, it is the referee that we first say, hey, Osobo man, go back to your Osobo. Some things are not seen, but they are unnecessary for your Christianity. Are you listening to me? They are called weights. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. I really need someone who can be fast tonight. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. He said, get rid of all evil behavior. All. Be God with all deceit. Hypocrisy. Jealousy. And all unkind speech. Mr. Pastor, be done with hypocrisy. So a sister says, some of you pastors, you use anointing to cover up for your bad character. And it's very true. Say, Touch me by accident, die by correction. You too will soon die. That's not the spirit of the gospel. That's a foul spirit speaking through you. You intimidate the brethren because you are an anointed person. Who says the brethren are not anointed too? And it's the African pattern of Christianity. We like to make people subservient around us. So we carry an air. He said, get rid of all this bad behavior. How did King James? Media, you had King James. So look at how King James puts it. Wherefore, lay aside malice. So what is malice? Uh -uh. So, malice is what you practice more than what you know, right? Okay, what's malice? Yes. Malice can be properly defined as the time when you keep the offending of someone to you. To heart. Exactly. When you keep hot. You ne we have so many people like that in church. They will never speak up. And you are not a wizard. Though. They will rather gossip. And do you know if you speak it up? I will reach out to pastor about this. Maybe pastor didn't know. Maybe she doesn't know. It's better you speak up than to keep it. Stop being malicious. It's a weight. Lay us that malice. And all guile. Guile is deception. Ah, we have deceptive people in church. Put on a cologne, a perfume to make up for the stench in their character. Guile. Hypocrisies. Some mummies, some pastors' wives, the day they were showing hypocrisy, they have it in heavy dose. That's why they call them mummy. They are Egyptian mummies. Nobody can rise around them. You know, I told you. A pastor was drinking coke. His PA too drank coke. He said, I'm drinking coke, you are drinking coke. He said, it's your destiny you are drinking. Yes. So if he's drinking coke, the boy should be drinking Zobo or Kunu. <laughs> kunu. So what is, what's in coke? So he says he's drinking his destiny. And before you know what, he will tell him the story of Giazi. That that's how Giazi got leprosy. You are manipulative. The Bible says, get rid of it. Does this mean you should be unruly? No. But we don't raise people with threats. So, hypocrisy envies. Nobody can rise under you. I said it yesterday. See, you know the spirit I operate. If I notice you are around me and you are better, I won't be far away from you. From afar, from near, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing how I can improve on myself. It is better off than to become jealous. Who is she? Don't mind her. She's, she's, she's nonsense. You are the nonsense. I mean, it doesn't make sense that you have Christ and you are still envious. Whatever makes people around you better than you, give yourself time of working on yourself. You can catch up or even be better. Go for that. Rather than talking them down. He says you should deal with evil speaking. Look at, look at James chapter 1 verse 21. 
So and that minister, Larry is already on the keys. He's already telling me, Pastor, your time is... Okay, in five minutes, I should quickly rush up every other thing that is there. James, yes, James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore? Lay aside all filthiness. What is something that is filthy, dirty, and smelly? Mm -hmm. Yes, superfluity of naughtiness. How can a believer be naughty? We thought it is children that are naughty. He said we should lay aside superfluity of naughtiness. Uh huh. We receive with meekness, humility, and gentility. The engrafted word. Yes, an engrafted word is a word, for instance, tonight, tonight I said several things, but there is one word that didn't leave you. That's your engrafted word. It means walk on this word you are hearing. Receive with meekness that word that hits you. See, see, see. Uh, hold on, uh, my dear. Each time I read up or get info, I research a lot, that someone I celebrate in the faith faith is fake i'm sad for a whole day she knows she says what's your trouble i says i am afraid if this person can go on with this deception this long and see the day you became a christian the bible didn't say throw away your brain many christians their brain is not objective they are lying on him they are lying on him 20 women came out for one man they are lying on him he's the most anointed man in the whole world why are they not lying on Adeboye? It's only that your pastor they are lying on. Sister, wake up. You are lost. Chances are that man has bought you over with emotion. So you no longer follow truth. You are following the lie that they sell to you. Hallelujah. So one, one father of the faith we respect. When one pastor was in the heat of accusations left, right, and center in South Africa, he went to bring this Nigerian pastor that we celebrate. And that pastor went to begin to help him to attack all his enemies. I said, ah, the spirit of Nigeria followed you to South Africa. You can't say until these issues die down. And I'm sure of what you really represent. For now, I'm not coming. It's all about money. Diego, seed will land. So let me land there too, even if God is not sending me. Finish up there. Said, receive with meekness the encrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. The first pattern to building an enduring infrastructure is lay aside weight and sin. If you can't lay aside sin and wait, any other thing you build is a, is, is a waste of time. Look at the second thing. Go back to uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Okay, he said, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily be set. He said, and run with patience. So what's the second word to build with? Patience. Build with patience. Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 6. He says, we should be example of those who through faith and patience obtained the promise listen to me if you can't build patiently you will build poorly isaiah 28 16 he that is of god will not make haste who are you competing with that you are in a hurry all my mates all my mates okay who told you who your mates are all my mates have gotten married. All my mates are given bed. All my mates have built houses. All my mates are using so-so kind of car. Why should I be using this? You are lost. God has sent me to relocate you and bring you back to the faith. Build with patience. Someone say amen. Number three, build by faith. The same Hebrews 6, 11 we quoted. I mean 11, 6 we quoted. It says that we should follow the example of those who through faith, first of all. Hebrews in chapter 13 and then verse number verse number 7. Hebrews in chapter 13 and then verse 7. 
Remember them that has rule over you. Uh -huh. Who have spoken the word of God to you. Who's what? Who's what? Who's dressing style? Who's talking style? Who's vision? Who's brand? He says, who's faith? Oh, no. The power to build an enduring house is by faith. Anything that is not done in faith is nothing. I don't care the brand. So, a pastor of a popular church in, in Abuja wanted to be, wanted to dramatize his message. I kind of think, he, he, I don't, I don't, I don't really think he did wrong. Maybe he should have just sought for a license since he knows where. We're in a crazy time in Nigeria. He decided to use AK-47 to, de to describe his message. They arrested him. So don't follow his action. Follow his faith. His action resulted to him being arrested. You could be arrested tomorrow if you go and carry battle acts. To say, I want to describe that we are God's battle acts. They will say you are a cult member. That the acts belongs to your cult group. Hey, your confraternity. So you see, follow their faith, not necessarily their actions. Their faith means the things that is in the word of God that you see them do. Do it. Can you say amen? Number four, build by the Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. Spirit, see the Lord. Built by the Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 14. Live in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Live in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, then we should if we are in the Spirit, then we should live in the Spirit. We are called to live in the spirit. We are not called to be showy. You have nobody to prove a point to. You are not pastoring to prove a point. You are not teaching to prove a point. You are not believing to prove a point. You are not serving to prove a point. Let that desire to prove a point die in you. If it doesn't die in you, you will run another man's race. You will get to finish line. And they will be telling you, sorry, your own, your own roots was the other way. Then what am I doing here? You are running another one race because you wanted to prove a point. And finally, Hebrews in chapter 12, verse 2, it says, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto him. Cast your eyes. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. If you take your eyes off him, you will see something else. Keep your eyes on your keeper. Keep your eyes on your maker. Keep your eyes on your lover. He's the lover of your soul. He loves you more than your spouse does. He loves you more than your dad and mom. Keep your eyes on him. If everything fails you, keep your eyes on Jesus. When Peter kept his eyes on the storm, he began to sink. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you won't sink. There is guarantee that you will get to the shore. Someone say hallelujah. Or I would have to stop at this point. And when we come... Finally, on Sunday, I'll teach about the fourth part in this building's spiritual infrastructure. And there I'll be talking about principles that can help you build an enduring edifice. Principles. If I can touch on two or three or four or at most five, that should suffice for Sunday. And that should surmise the teaching. Someone bow your heads and let's talk to God. Father, bless you because we have heard you tonight. We magnify you. We adore you because you're good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you because we've heard of you. We've heard about the purpose of this infrastructure we are building. We have read about the patterns to build this infrastructure. We trust you that you will help us, our Lord and our maker, not to disappoint you, not to fail you, not to bring shame to your name. Uh, we don't want to become deceivers. We don't want to become followers of deceivers. We are pleading that you will help us. Help us to contain ourselves. Help us not to fall prey to the deception of the devil. Help us to uphold the truth. Help us to uphold you. I pray for everyone who has come to service today. Whatever burden you came with, the Lord meets with you. The Lord caused the burden to be taken away. 
let your burdens melt in the name of the lord jesus let the lord give answers to your petition let your life never remain the same again believe me can you say amen celebrate jesus tonight